will move forward. And every believer here will move forward. And your family will move forward. As you contribute to the growth of the body of Christ, the Lord will contribute to the growth of your life. And as you fulfill the desire of Christ concerning the church, all your good, good desires, they will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And while you're still praying, you don't even have to pray long because you are totally giving to the Lord. Everything you desire, everything will be given in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12, I'm reading here from verse 5. So we be many, a one body in Christ. There is unity, not uniformity. Uniformity means everybody dresses the same way, everybody looks the same way, everybody talks the same way. No, that's uniformity. But we have unity. You look at the hands are different from the legs, and the legs are different from the ears, and the ears different from the eyes. It is not uniformity, but they're all united together. If you drive a car, while you are driving the car, your leg is doing its part, your hands are doing their part, your ear is listening for any other extraneous sound, and your eyes are watching, all those members are not uniform, but they are united. This church will be united. The members will be united. And the workers will be united. It is in that unity, not uniformity, it is that unity in diversity that we're going to make the progress he has called us to. And it says, everyone, members of another, having then gifts differently, verse 6, according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the profession of faith or ministry, let us wait on a ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that, um, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Everything there is clear. Everything is clear. It says there's prophecy there. It says there's teaching there. It says there's ministry. It says there's exhortation. It says there is giving. It also says there's ruling, administration. Everything is clear except, uh, you, you know, some people may wonder about the prophecy. First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 3. It says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men. What kind of thing does he say? It's going to rain tomorrow. No, that one does not edify anyone. What does, what does he do? It's going to, you know, this is going to happen. That's going to, no. Look at that. He that prophesieth speaketh unto men to, what's the first word? Edification. What's the second word? Exhortation. What's the next word? Comfort. You're encouraging other people. You're taking the word of God. And what encourages anybody more than the word of God? What encourages anybody more than the word we're forth telling? And we tell you before it happens, we say, as we end the service today, and you pray, and you pray with all your heart, God will answer your prayer. We are speaking to comfort you, to edify you, to encourage you, and to make you fervent in prayer. And then we're saying, all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. That's prophecy already, that you'll find it to be true. God will fulfill that word. Any word that is spoken to you from the word of God, from the revelation of God, and it says, it edifies you, and it exalts you, it encourages you, it comforts you, that's a prophecy the Lord is directing us to, and that prophecy will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Now, the people who do this, who render their service to the Lord and to the body of Christ, what state of mind should they be in? That's very important because we're talking about the consecrated service of sanctified believers. And let's look at this word sanctified and let's explain it a little. Second Chronicles chapter 29. Second Chronicles chapter 29. And let us see what we can understand from what the Lord is saying. Second Chronicles chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 5. In verse 5, it says in verse 5, And said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves. Number one. Sanctify now yourselves. 
Number two now. And sanctify the house of the Lord your God. What does that mean? Sanctify the house of the Lord your God. See what it means? The latter part of verse 5. And carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. Carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. Look up here for a moment. You see the temple, the tabernacle of the children of Israel are three parts. The outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. The holy of holies, that's where you have the Shekinah glory of God. And the holy place, that's where you have the showbread. The outer court, that's where they killed those animals and sacrifices that they offered to the Lord. But it was the children of Israel, there were some unclean things, some filthiness in the second compartment. That is in the holy place. And now they were to serve the Lord. And then the king told them, sanctify yourselves, that's yourself. But now, as we think of the tabernacle, at the holy place inside there that other people do not see. Because you see, when everybody comes, they can see the outer court, everywhere is clean. But there was filthiness in the holy place. Sanctify that house of God and take the uncleanness, filthiness out of the holy place. You see, we're like that tabernacle. Body, that's our outer court. The soul, that's the holy place. And the spirit, that's the holy of holies. And then it says, although we are saved, and on the outside, nobody can see any uncleanness. We don't tell lies. We don't steal. We don't do any of those external things anymore. We're saved. But in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, there are some things there that we don't want to see the light of day. People have, when they have animosity or hatred or madness and all that, we can smile on the outside. But all those things are filthiness in the sight of the Lord. Empty it. Let everything come out. Cleanse the inward, the inside part. It is that inward holiness that the Lord is referring to when he says, sanctify yourselves. Look at verse 15. In verse 15 of that same chapter, and they gathered their brethren and they sanctified themselves. You see that? And they came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of God. What were they doing when they were cleansing the house of God? They were sanctifying the house of God. Sanctification is cleansing. You feel clean on the inside. You lay everything on the altar. You consecrate everything before the Lord. And as you sanctify yourself like that, then you are able to render your service to the Lord without any defilement. You are able to render acceptable service unto the Lord. Verse 16. And the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord. You see that? The sanctification into the inner part of your life inner part of your being and they went to the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness which they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord and the Levites took it to carry it out abroad into Bukidron that everything will flow away and all the things that have been in our lives and will come to Christ and now he sanctifies us everything will flow away in Jesus name they will not be there anymore in Jesus name because it is that's the condition of the people that is serving the Lord. Look at um, Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 52. Before I read verse 11, let me read from verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth, there shall not, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. You see that? You see that condition? That's the condition he wants us to be. You are converted. And then he says, put on your strength. Christ is your strength. The unclean will not come into you anymore. I thought you would say amen there. In verse 2, shake thyself from the dust 
and sit down, O Jerusalem. Lose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Everything that held you captive this year, they are broken in Jesus' name. Look at, look at verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains at the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, and publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. It's talking about those who serve the Lord, and those who go to evangelize, those who go to tell other people, behold your God. Behold your Savior, and behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. It says, Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. These are the people that are serving the Lord. We lift up the voice, and then it says, With the voice together shall they see, for they shall see eye to eye. That's our unity again. We're united in this church. Thank God we're united. I said, thank God we are united. It says, they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. But how will that happen? The people that serve the Lord that way, what condition will they be? Look at verse 11 now. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. It needs for us to be saved, to be cleansed, to be sanctified, to be made holy as we are bearing the vessel of the Lord. And you say that's Old Testament, of course. Look at the New Testament. Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 21. Second Timothy chapter 2. We're reading from verse 21. As we serve the Lord, He wants us to serve Him with sanctification. A sanctified heart. A purified heart. A cleansed heart. A holy heart. In Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these. It shall be a vessel unto honor. Tell me the next word there. Tell me out loud. Tell me again. I'm going to read again. I'm going to get, get ready, get ready. I'm going to make you pronounce that word properly. If a man therefore purge himself from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor. Here comes your chance. Sanctified and meet or suitable, prepared for every for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. That, that's why sanctification is so important, very necessary. After you are saved, go back to the cross, go back to Calvary. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, purge me. Lord, purify me. I want to serve you, and you will serve the Lord. I said you will serve the Lord. You know, it may be you have just one talent, or maybe two talents, or five talents. You know the people that had five talents, they served the Lord. And when the Lord came back, He rewarded them. He will reward your service. And those that had two talents, they served. They didn't say, well, I will use only one out of the two. If you have five talents, use all the five. If you have two talents, you sold the two. And the one that had only one talent, he was the one that went to bury the one talent. And when the Lord came back, he said, you slothful and wicked servant, you knew that I was going to reap where I didn't sow, but I gave you this. Why didn't you trade with it? And he said, take that talent from him and give to the one that has five, who has now come to have ten, and did this man throw him into the outer darkness. I pray that will not be your Lord. He wants you to show gratitude unto him that you are born again, that you are saved. And now you've come back to Calvary and he has sanctified you and you're serving the Lord. While you're serving the Lord, heaven will be serving you. The angels will be serving you. You'll be surprised the multiplied blessings that will be upon your life. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible loss. A terrible lag. When you are not serving the Lord, the more you serve the Lord, the more your strength will increase. And the more the power of God will be in your life in Jesus' name. Your life will be brighter. Your family will be wonderful. And this year, as you serve the Lord, if it didn't get to you, you present yourself. 
We may not know you, that you have this talent, but you know you have the talent. That you have this gift, but you know you have the gift. You see, it is not a humility when somebody says, well, I don't have too much. I cannot do too much. You see, that's what Paul, the apostle by the Spirit of God, was trying to correct among the people. There were those who were proud, and they were saying, I am the eye, I have no need of you. I am the hand, I don't have need of the leg. And Paul, the apostle said, don't say that. You are not so important, you don't need other people. But there's the other side of the story. The people that said, well, I'm only a leg and there's not much I can do. They can do everything without me. He said, if everything were, if everybody were I, where were the hearing? And if everybody were hearing, where were the moving, the movement and the legs? That is, there's no superiority complex, there's no inferiority complex. God has given you grace, has given me grace. All of us are going to be useful together. And when we are sanctified, all that kind of, you know, keeping back yourself will not be there. You will come and you will exactly serve, in the excitedly serve in the house of the Lord. And great will be the pouring of the blessings of God upon your life in Jesus' name. You know, if you are served and you are saying, I don't want to serve, would you really say you are sanctified? Would you really say that you are single-minded? Would you say you are steadfast? Would you say that you are totally selfless? If you are not giving yourself everything you've got to serve Christ and to serve the body of Christ, no, you cannot say that. But as you are sanctified and purified, you say, yes, Lord, here am I. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. This is your day. I said, this is your day. You'll not be hiding in that corner anymore in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11. For both he that sanctified, that's Christ, and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. The people who are sanctified, Christ owns them. And Christ publicizes them, and Christ talks about them publicly. It's not ashamed to call them brethren. I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that ye might sanctify the people with what? what? With his own blood, suffered without the gate. He suffered for your sanctification. He shed his blood for your sanctification. If you don't make use of that efficacious blood of the Lamb, and say, I'm saved, I'm saved, and you don't go forward to get sanctified, that's a part of what Jesus paid for that you are missing. You'll not miss it again. Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, Bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. He suffered, he shed his blood to sanctify us, will pray, will consecrate, will lay everything on the altar, will be sanctified. I said, will be sanctified. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. No hatred in our families this year. No separation in our families this year. Give me a good amen. I can't understand. Some people, they say they're, you know, they believe the Bible. They're children of God. And.